Mixic recently came out with their latest automotive scope and it is nice. Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning into Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are taking a look at the ATO 1104 successor, the SATO 1004. It is Mixig's latest offering to the automotive world and I've used it several times already and have found key differences between the two and I think that it is definitely an upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick overview of some of the key changes that I've seen starting with the cosmetic the most obvious thing is that we no longer have these uh, giant covers on there it's it's a more uh, streamlined look and we also have uh, upgraded BNC ports I'm um, wondering if they'll put a transducer make a transducer one day uh, in order to facilitate the use of these upgraded BNC ports that is something you do not get from the ATO 1104 these do come with come with covers that are kind of leashed so that you don't lose them but the Sado I'll call it the Sado uh, does not have the leashed covers not a big deal my PicoScope runs without them anyway not too big of a deal there's quite a few differences uh, I'm gonna try to cover as many as possible the most obvious thing is the buttons this one is touch and it does buttons as well which i gotta say i'm i'm truly impressed with the way they did this it's not only a four-way position uh, buttons on these but it's also a press down which we'll go into later as to the function of those buttons let's go ahead and turn this over and one of the things that i used to do with my ato is remove this cover i actually kept this off at all times but on this one they kept it off permanently and I like that <laughs> because I did not like this flap personally that's a personal thing um, to each their own uh, another thing you'll notice is that this one has a micro HDMI this one has a full-size HDMI which is great because who doesn't have a full-size HDMI these days uh, it sure is nice uh, it, this one also brings a standard USB port and a USB 3.0 so if any of you have a mouse dongle that you are using a, in conjunction with this scan uh, with the scope you can also tr transfer files put a USB drive in there and transfer files as opposed to this one where you would have to remove whatever dongle is in there and then um, put in your flash drive and transfer files that way not a huge deal but uh, sure is nice to have uh, USB ports. It doesn't ha it doesn't hurt out at all. This one to turn it off, you press it once and you hit the shutdown button. But this one, you have you have to hold it and press power off. Not a big deal at all. Not a big deal at all. Just something to note because if you press the the power button once, it goes to the home screen. It has the same function as this button over here. I hope you guys can see this uh, well and. <coughs> this one does not have a master switch but this one does uh, you can imagine my surprise when i started pressing this button and nothing happened <laughs> i took a look at the battery and everything um, but this one does have a master switch to prevent any accidental uh, operation of that switch so that is sure is a nice feature let's go ahead and turn it around some more this is definitely an upgrade in my book this is an upgrade because you have an optional dual stand that locks as well you put it down and it locks in place this one does not lock it is just there it does not lock this one you're not going to be able to knock it over unless you want it to you can use one or the other or both at the same time sometimes i'll just go up to a, a desk pop out whichever one is most convenient and uh use it doesn't seem like much but uh, believe it or not little details like that sure are nice one of the other things is that I didn't like this stand mainly because when you have to, when you do this well this time I did it but a lot of times when I'm removing the stand the other side stays stuck so you have to go to the other side it's it's not optional like this one you have to unlock both of them in order for it to come out which eh, it's not a huge deal sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't 
I guess it's mainly on this side. Didn't notice that until now. Well, it did it this time. So anywho, not a huge deal, but sure is something to remember. Both of them have user serviceable batteries and um, I, I could be wrong, but this may be just like 500 milliamp hours less of a battery. Uh, not to worry because I've had this thing running for six hours straight and it, that's more than any laptop I know. Um, six hours straight this thing just kept running. I have no problem with the battery life on these things. Uh, they are great. And as you can notice, this thing is still going strong. Uh, I've had issues in the past with heat, but so far so good. Uh, just an update on that. Another thing to notice is the handle. When these are shipped to you, they come with no handle installed. It comes with it in the package, but it's not installed. Doesn't seem like much, but this is a real adventure to get on. <laughs> You have to uh, do quite the procedure to get this thing on. These come pre-installed already and it is a much slimmer, nicer looking handle. I use them a lot actually, believe it or not, I use those handles a lot. Last thing I want to do is drop this thing. The max megabits we can get on this is 28 megabits. On this one it is 70. So you do get a lot more resolution there. One thing that I did forget to mention while we were back here is that this has a dual fan setup. And it's a bit kind of restricted. It looks that way. It looks a bit restricted to me. But this one comes with a single bigger fan. And it's got a little mesh filter there. And I don't really care for the noise. I don't know if some people may, it may bother them. In the automotive field, I really don't care about the noise. Uh, there's a lot of things way louder than that to worry about and it is not an issue for me. Speaking of the resolution, as you can see I have a capture here. I was going down the test drive and it is an ignition capture and just to show this thing in use because a lot of times when, when we use a tool we do a review. We don't use the tool but this time we did and we get to see the incredible amount of resolution this thing has, the ability to uh, zoom in. Uh, we can either zoom in by tapping in repeatedly, changing our time base, or we can press the zoom button, which this tool does have that option as well. And we can look at it that way, which is nice in this particular vehicle. Um, there was a lean condition and it led to the breakdown of the secondary ignition system so you can see a very high lean condition right there across several cylinders I don't think we have multiple injector issues here on this one and then eventually the coil broke down on that one because it is so much uh, resistance internal in, in cylinder resistance due to this lean condition that eventually it broke down the uh, secondary ignition and it had to find another way back to ground outside of the cylinder causing our misfires and whatnot until it you know went back to a lean condition so anywho <laughs> not to give you a case study but it's, it shows you the, the the convenience of this thing is just slap on the probe getting your car it's it's just a lot more different this is my go-to for the test drives for sure uh, this is definitely my go-to for test drives. One of the things I do like about this one over the, AT over the ATO is that when you press quick save, it saves a reference waveform. That's great. But on this one, you hit save, and it'll take a picture or a snapshot and save the reference waveform as well, which you could just pop up easily right there. Um, you can choose your, if you hit menu, you choose your, your file. This is the one that I just took right now. But one thing to, you, you got to know your scopes, right? So one of the things you should know is on this particular model, where you take your snapshot dictates how much resolution you get on your reference waveform. So for example, I took my, you see that? We got missing data here. So I'm going to remove my reference waveform. I'm going to turn on my channel one again and zoom into the problem area. This is the problem area right here. Instead of taking a snapshot of the whole thing, I'm going to take a snapshot of maybe this 
let's say let's just say right there actually let's hit that quick save button let's go to reference hit menu and choose our latest file it is a copy of that one I'm gonna turn off my yellow channel and zoom into that and you can see that all the data is still there we do not miss data so keep in mind that when you're saving reference waveform how much data you're capturing at that moment dictates how much quality you'll have um, <laughs> this sounds uh, kind of easy saying it that way but uh, you'd be surprised you don't want to get you don't want to burn yourself so I would say in my advice would be check your reference waveforms before you move on and remove that uh, file remove that waveform from your scope once you hit that run button that thing is long gone fellas one of the other things that we noticed that are different from each other is the way we can select our time base so this one if you press the middle button you can just at a glance select uh, all the options it is 1000 seconds per division down to two nanoseconds per division same as this one but this one is different you would have to well hold on let me turn this off you would have to use it as a rotary knob to do so if you don't want to just keep tapping the different um, directions right so you could just use a rotary knob type situation which is nice I'm not gonna lie that's that's kind of nice right this one is just at a glance up oh, that's what I want you know it's it's more streamlined in a way it definitely cuts down on time once you get used to this stuff you saw me turning on and on channels on and off this one uh, for me to turn off channel one I have to open up the menu and then hit the button again to get rid of it this one press the button and it's done it is a single touch off single touch on hit the menu right this one single touch on and so see that's one of the things about the touch screen it, it, I pressed it but nothing happened come with the menu on so far we're all the same but to turn it off you would have to hit it the third time this one I just turn it just hit the button just hit the channel one button which they do illuminate which is nice so if you look at channel one channel two channel three channel four reference and math all illuminate all of these illuminate which is pretty nice colors don't hurt the only speaking of colors one of the things I would have liked that mix six still hasn't done is colored probes I would love for them to come out with colored uh, probes because a lot of times when you get the all black probes across all four probes when you're hooked up to a vehicle let's say doing cam and crank and you're you've got two three four wires hooked up to the vehicle well a lot of times you're gonna get confused <laughs> you're gonna say well which one is this one which one is that one you know is it bank one is it bank two is it intake is it ex is it exhaust and whatnot uh, so it would be nice to just have a probe have probes that are colored the wires that are colored according to this uh, color scheme that they already have yellow blue uh, purple and, and green it sure would be nice I'm not gonna lie now is that a huge deal no it's not if I really needed it I would just grab my Pico um, leads and do that already but it sure would be nice it wouldn't hurt one of the other differences that you can notice is the voltage data presentation here there's none there so if I go over here I can move my level and it'll tell me where my level is at so if I wanted it at perfect zero I can either slide it to perfect zero and hopefully I get there I might be off or I could just press this center button and it brings it to perfect zero so I can have this anywhere press that button and it brings zero to the middle line here in the uh, graticule on this one for me to do that I can either go this way sliding it and not knowing truly where zero is unless I put a cursor or I could press the 50 percent and hit the channel that it corresponds to so it is a two-step process as opposed to just pressing the channel that I want and then pressing middle or 50 percent really so it's just a one button thing sure is nice same thing with the trigger I can't do that with the trigger here on this one I don't see an option to just press the middle of the waveform so if I go here on this one let me see I can 
pick my level, but I can also hit 50% on this one and it'll grab the 50% uh, percent signal that is being captured at that time. It'll detect the peak to peak and then it'll grab the middle of the amplitude. So sure is nice to have that little feature um, instead of sometimes you'd be surprised your trigger level will be out of screen and you'll see this arrow down here. And if you're, you're not paying attention or maybe you missed it or for whatever reason really, you uh you're looking for your trigger you can't find it well you just hit that button and bam it's right where you need it more than likely anyway so in our channel menus we have two options we can either slide this to the left on this one we would turn on our channel and hit that button again and this one gives us three options uh voltage current and pressure this one only gives us voltage and then current they took away the pressure that's fine usually more most pressure transducers are um, to like a tenth degree or a hundred degree so if you use voltage and you put 10x or 100x it'll probably work out to the transducer that you're working on only some transducers don't have a uh, 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 uh, proportion this one the, the nice thing was that you can create a custom probe in a way where if you have a 5 volt transducer you can set the minimum and the maximum but as we stated in the previous uh, review the MPA you cannot change that value you cannot change anything f away from megapascal and there's a limit there's a max on the megapascal scale that is under the working PSI that we need for in cylinder stuff so it'll it'll cap out on you um, I don't know if that's the reason why they took away pressure on a simple update would fix that um, in my opinion but I am happy with the way it is now of course you have the differential probe option as well we don't have one ourselves but it, it sure it, it is there and it's nice to have we have some presets for their current cr uh, clamps as well most current clamps have a uh, proportion value like one millivolt for per amp or whatnot and you just match them up or you do the math and and select it yourself either 10x or 100x or 1k x 1k times more correctly said and and it'll work out just fine the screen lock is pretty nice too because sometimes you don't want this thing to get bumped into uh, one button press and this thing is screen locked this one you have to press the side button and then hit the screen lock button and sometimes the touch doesn't work but not a big deal anything I want to do it is locked if I want to unlock it I have to do the two button press and this one screen unlock done so the only way to bring down the main menu on this one is to slide down from the top which is an option that we can do here and as you can see it is much smoother as well so it's definitely a different machine here <laughs> um, but we also have the option to go over here as well that can bring down our main menu our quick menu is from underneath so we have the same options over here serial decoding cursors uh, measure alls so you can do measure all it'll pop out all of the possible measurements and uh, it's, it's a nice option there's obviously another capture here this is a photo capture but you can also do that without a single button right there just hit that button once and that capture is taken I think I might use the reference waveform just in case sometimes more uh, we can delete the reference waveforms as well go ahead and show you how to do that we go to files and you could do it quickly and go to audio um, or but that's in the downloads folder so we need to go to oscilloscope and go to audio it sees it as a wave file so those are your reference waveforms you can use your timestamps to decide which ones you want to delete and whatnot. This is the same menu that you'll be using to transfer files as well. So once you pop in a flash drive, it'll pop in right here and you can copy and paste all the files to your heart's content. And of course, as usual, I did misspeak on what I had said earlier. I said that the max resolution is uh, 70 megabits. It's the depth, really. It's the memory depth. So keep that in mind this one actually has more memory depth than this one does this one has a 28 megabit max memory depth and this one has 70 megabits keep that in mind I think that just about wraps it up but except for one thing we're going to 
turn both of them off so we can compare the shutoff times which should be very comparable to the boot times um, and you'll see it for yourself wow this one's actually booting took a little longer to boot not a huge deal at all uh, usually when I'm about to scope something I press the button as soon as I grab the scope set up all my leads and it's ready to go but for you guys to see how long it takes for each one to boot uh, it's not a it's, it's not a big deal for me boot times is really not a big deal for me compared to a laptop especially so we're gonna go ahead and press the buttons now and um, you'll notice that this one actually boots faster I think it's a decent trade-off I really don't mind it at all and um, it works for me I mean I think it's fine this one is up and running a little faster but I mean are you really gonna be it's not the Wild West here it's are you really gonna be like it's 20 seconds really gonna make or break your diag uh, <laughs> you have bigger things to worry about if that's the case usually I just keep them on this these uh, scopes have no problem being on at all times but sure is nice to have a little quick boot time just to if you want to keep it off all at all times so basically all of these buttons yes you can find them here but you have to go through a little more steps a little more um, processes before you can do achieve the same goal as what you're achieving here uh, it's not a huge deal but it sure is nice once you get used to the way this thing works uh, I think it'll be a, an excellent combination between the two it, it definitely increases uh, production per se or efficiency because of the way that everything works sometimes the touchscreen it, it acts up it acts funny or something like that maybe you just want to go with the buttons the buttons tend to be uh, a bit more tactile they're very responsive this is extremely responsive I mean all the buttons have I have not had a single button not do and like its function when pressed so that's just something to keep in mind I hope this video was useful I appreciate you all for taking the time to watch and um, I'm I would I recommend this scope absolutely I would definitely recommend this scope I think it is th I think they nailed it to be honest with you and you will be seeing this more in the upcoming videos uh, so if you want to see more of this stuff be sure to subscribe hit like if you haven't already leave a comment with any questions I'll try to update further videos or future videos answering those questions like you know how can you do this how can you do that does it do this does it do that thank you all again for watching I uh, appreciate you and uh, till next time